ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. The firefighter who lost his life battling the El Dorado fire in San Bernardino last week is from San Diego. Charles Edward Morton was a squad boss for the Big Bear interagency hotshot crew. The San Bernardino National Forest confirmed tonight he died while engaged in fire suppression operations. Charlie was born in San Diego and had a 14 year career with the Forest Service. We send our condolences to his family tonight and our gratitude for his service. We're here for one reason, because we're backed into a corner. End of story. Local business owners rallying for their livelihood on the eve of another possible return to more restrictions due to the pandemic. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. We should know by tomorrow afternoon if we move into the purple tier, meaning several businesses can no longer operate indoors. Our ABC 10 reporter Anthony Pura is outside the county administration building with what supervisors are saying tonight after a private meeting. Supervisors say they discussed legal options regarding the state's reopening criteria and how it impacts small businesses and schools. However, they did not vote to take any actions. Meanwhile, there is growing concern from business owners over another pending indoor closure. Outside the steps of the county administration building, many rallied in an effort to keep San Diego County open. Arturo Ruelas owns a restaurant. It's called Birria Chivos and Chaves in National City. We've been there for about 14 years. He says he has followed every rule and protocol asked of restaurants since the pandemic. They closed their indoor dining area when public health orders said they needed to close, and they waited until they were given the green light to reopen indoor dining with a capacity limit and modifications. And then they tell you they're going to close again. So what are you going to do with the food if they close? You know, it's, this is going back and forth. It's going crazy. Based on the governor's plan for a safe reopening, if San Diego County's current COVID-19 metrics don't change, it could trigger another indoor closure for businesses. We can fight the virus and be open for business. San Diego County Board Vice Chair Jim Desmond was at the rally. He joined business owners pushing for local control, saying that local leaders should be the ones calling the shots for safely reopening their communities. On Twitter, Desmond says he will be joining an Orange County Supervisor Tuesday to unveil a petition. Their goal is to get schools and businesses back open. Board Chairman Greg Cox released a statement after their special meeting Monday evening that said in part, we will continue to work with the state to make sure the metrics accurately reflect the underlying dynamics of the pandemic in San Diego County. Supervisor Kristen Gaspar also released a statement Monday that said in part, I have been in constant communication with our county clinical leadership and am optimistic that San Diego County will remain in our current tier tomorrow. Supervisors are expected to meet again Tuesday at 3 p.m. to provide a public update. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. All right, uh, a political fight is unfolding among those county leaders who have different views about the restrictions. Our Team 10 investigator Adam Recruzen shows us the possibilities they're weighing moving forward. As San Diego straddles the line between the substantial and widespread risk levels, also known as red and purple, county supervisors seem to be far from on the same page on what comes next. On Monday, Supervisor Nathan Fletcher called the actions of two of his fellow board members reckless and irresponsible. Supervisors Jim Desmond and Kristen Gaspar are inciting a fight between government and small business. They are exploiting the pain and suffering that small businesses are going through as a result of a global pandemic as a wedge for political gain. Gaspar responding, she's never supported an approach to reopening that was not supported by the public health officer. In a statement directed at Fletcher, Gaspar wrote, I measured the distance between our office doors and it's seven feet. So he and I can actually have a socially distanced conversation anytime he isn't holding a press conference. The public display of acrimony comes as supervisors continue to discuss different options, including whether to take legal action against the state to prevent potentially sliding back into the most restrictive risk level. Fletcher against any potential legal action, Gaspar for it. Supervisor Jim Desmond weighing the options and waiting to hear any potential ramifications. I think 99% of the people you know, businesses want to do the right thing, let them open, let them be safe. Legal actions by citizens and government entities against the state aren't uncommon. We reported on businesses and churches suing the governor. In August, the Orange County Board of Education sued the governor to reopen schools.
There's precedent from before the pandemic and during the pandemic for county and other local governments to file suit against the state government to try to uh, get the courts to weigh in on who holds the reins. Lindsay Wiley is a professor of law at American University Washington College of Law. She says if the county did file a lawsuit based on recent rulings, it's likely the courts defer to the governor. It's hard to say much uh, given that we haven't seen what the complaint is that the county might bring. Uh, but for the most part, the general trend has been to uphold reasonable orders of this type. Adam Rakusen, ABC 10 News. And here are the latest numbers on the coronavirus in the county. 348 new cases were reported today. Our total now is just under 45,000. And no new deaths were reported, which is usually the case on Mondays. That number remains at 760. Tomorrow, Riverside County leaders will decide whether to throw out the state's reopening guidelines and control reopening plans locally. The Board of Supervisors says that it will help businesses open their doors sooner. And if the plan is approved, the county will allow shopping malls, restaurants and other shops to resume indoor operations as soon as Wednesday with limited capacity. Under the state system, Riverside County is still in the most restrictive purple tier. Some students at Sage Canyon School in the Del Mar Union School District will go back to distance learning for 14 days after two people there tested positive for COVID-19. Our ABC tennis reporter Mimi Alcala explains how the school responded and has reaction from a parent. The Del Mar Union School District confirming two positive COVID-19 cases at Sage Canyon School in Carmel Valley. In a statement to ABC 10 News Monday, the Director of Student Services said, all students and staff who were directly exposed have been contacted and will be quarantining for 14 days. The district has been in consultation with the San Diego County Department of Public Health. While the positive cases may be alarming for parents, Amy Berkeley was pleased to see how the situation was handled. They had two students in the school test positive. One was in first grade and the other was in third grade. We got notification on Sunday and by Monday morning, um, all class materials were available for pickup. Um, really easy and convenient. Berkeley is the PTA president and has two sons who attend the school. She says a student in her third graders class tested positive. For the next two weeks, he will be remote learning. We picked up a Chromebook, learning packet, homework worksheets, um, whiteboards, all the material that they would need. It was very well thought out. According to the Del Mar Union School District safe reopening plan, if a student or teacher tests positive, the whole class will quarantine for 14 days and learning will be offered remotely. Substitute teachers will also be trained to give online lessons if they do need to step in. This summer, the California Department of Public Health laid out guidelines and recommendations for schools that choose to reopen in person. Closures would be put in place for two weeks if 5% of a classroom tests positive, 5% of a school tests positive, or 25% of a district tests positive. We had um, really good communication from the district, from the principal, and from the teacher. And the school has very much so supported um, a healthy reopening. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. More schools are deciding to continue distance learning through the end of the year and beyond. The Sweetwater Union High School District will continue distance learning through the end of the year. The district made that decision, citing significantly higher COVID cases within its community. And the majority of classes at Grossmont and Cuyamaca Community Colleges will be taught online or remotely through spring of 2021. A limited number of classes such as laboratory classes will be online or on campus. And tonight the U.S. is on a chilling threshold as the COVID-19 death toll nears 200,000. The number of cases continues to climb across 29 states as well as Puerto Rico. President Trump was asked to grade his response to the virus today while saying that even one life lost is terrible. He gave himself mixed reviews. On public relations, I give myself a D. On the job itself, we take an A+. Plus. Meantime, the CDC caused confusion after an apparent reversal. Yesterday, the agency updated guidelines saying that tiny droplets with the virus can travel more than six feet in certain settings. And that includes places such as restaurants or gyms with limited ventilation. Today, the CDC took it back, saying the information was posted in error. As Tropical Storm Beta makes landfall in Texas tonight, it is bringing heavy rainfall and a storm surge of up to four feet.
Beta's outer bands have been lashing the coast of Texas and Louisiana, and it's flooding communities as well. Winds are getting weaker, but the slow moving pace of this storm is taking its toll. The National Hurricane Center says that Beta could bring up to 15 inches of rain in that area. Residents in the Gulf Coast areas have not been able to catch a break during this historic hurricane season. You know, it's like every month or every other week we're having to deal with this stuff, so. That storm is expected to head northeast midweek and millions are under warnings as officials urge people to stay vigilant.